guys, I am so excited to be back here on YouTube. I haven't filmed a video since my daughter has been born. Um, pregnancy, labor, newborn, oh my God, the hardest six months of my life. If you're a mom out there, you know what I mean. But I am so excited to be getting back into YouTube, making more videos, connecting with you guys. And I thought the best way to do so was to do a reaction video to Kendall Jenner's Guide to DIY Face Masks. If you guys don't know, hi, my name is Daisy. I am the CEO founder of Banish. Banish is a natural skincare line that focuses mostly on getting rid of those pesky acne scars. I've also been on YouTube since 2010. I have a gazillion videos, like 800 of them, um, about skincare and stuff. So I know quite a little bit about skincare, but most of my life I have been an acne sufferer. I've had acne, acne scarring. Um, I basically have the worst skin ever. I you know, I'm allergic to everything. So I've had to be really, really careful about the skincare products I use and also just be super diligent about the skincare ingredients. So I can't just use any kind of skincare. It has to be free of so many different ingredients. So I thought, hey, why not react to um, what the stars are using? Now, I just wanna put a disclaimer out there. Kendall Jenner, the Kardashians, I believe are some of the most hardworking, uh, girl bosses out there. I think Kris Jenner works extremely hard and I think the Kardashians have made an incredible name for themselves and they're incredible businesswomen. You can say what you want about them, but I really think to be relevant for over 20 years is definitely not an easy thing and I think the Kardashians have done such a great job of being amazing business women. Now I also want to say that the Kardashians are very, very wealthy and they have definitely had their fair share of work, work done and I'm not speaking for or against plastic surgery but I do also know that Kendall Jenner has also had work done which is why her face looks a little bit different than it was like when she was a teenager and she probably has the best team of dermatologists and skincare experts for her. So we don't need to compare ourselves <laughs> to how they look because they have the best team of experts, but we can see what they use and see if that, if we can use what they use in our own personal skincare routine. And I'm going to react to it based on my experience as a skincare brand founder. So I'm gonna start playing this. Hey guys, it's Kendall. I am so excited to be back for my second Beauty Secrets video with Vogue. I did my last one almost four years ago and I was just a little baby and my routine has completely changed since then. So I'm excited to show you guys my new routine. I obviously really, really- Okay, so <laughs> it's like really fluorescent lighting or what? Because the avocado, I didn't even know it was an avocado at first. I thought it was like, highlighter on her face because it's like really really fluorescently bright green really crazy i have this avocado mask on that i make myself in my kitchen and um it's super fun to make and super easy i put i feel like the bowl that she has the avocado mask on is like dolce gabbana like i'm gonna look this up afterwards but i'm sure the bowl is like 300 dollars. it's so fancy avocado in a bowl and then mash it up with some oatmeal this so avocado is so good for the skin. Avocado has natural fats, it has vitamin C, it has um, vitamin E, and it's really, really good for moisturizing the skin. So if you feel like, especially now, um, that we're turning on the heaters and the weather is cooler, if your skin is a little bit dry, you can definitely put an avocado mask. It's also really great for your hair. Avocado is amazing for your hair. You just take some avocado, smush it up, and put it in your hair and rinse it out. Now, the only thing for me, though, is that you have to be really careful when you take off the avocado because otherwise it's going to clog your drain. Um, it's not just like, you know, you just like wipe it off. You really need to take a towel or a paper towel or something and make sure that you don't clog your sink because I've done that before. I got it from Courtney, so I'm assuming it's really good and natural. Um, and then this organic lavender oil I just dropped. So the honey, honey is also really, really great for your skin. Honey is a natural antiseptic and it has natural antibacterial properties. So if you are suffering from acne, it can really help prevent future breakouts 
by being antibacterial. Now, the kind of honey you wanna use is called Manuka honey. Manuka honey is found in Australia, New Zealand. It's, it's a more rare form of honey. This honey has more of those like anti-bacterial um, properties than just like a regular processed honey. However, it is hard to find, it is very expensive. So if you can't get Manuka honey, you can also try to use a raw honey, but try as much as possible not to use like a processed honey, like the stuff in the bear jars. Although some of them are natural honeys, um, try to get a Manuka or as raw of a honey as possible because those have the really good um, antibacterial, antimicrobial properties. And also honey um, is really good for helping to fade acne scars. Now, it's not going to help fade a huge acne scar, but um, it can help lighten those like post acne marks, post uh, inflammatory hyperpigmentation marks. Drop or two into it and that's pretty much it. It's really easy, feels really nice and it moisturizes you, makes you glowy. So. Uh, organic or lavender oil is also really good. It helps kill bacteria on the skin and is anti. It is uh, anti-inflammatory. And lavender actually is a really great scent to help you relax. And did you know? So there's a study. I'm like into scents a lot. There's a study saying that scents of pumpkin spice, I believe it's like pumpkin pie and lavender, actually increases a male's testosterone level or increases how attractive they think you are. So if you're going on a hot date or whatnot, add some lavender, um, lavender oil like behind your ears or on your neck because that can actually make them feel more attracted to you. So that's, I thought that was cool. It's like pumpkin pie and like lavender, random. And when I'm trying to give my skin a little extra love, um, I have this amazing Pure Genics collagen mask. I love it so much and I keep it in the refrigerator. Right now I have it in this bowl of ice along with my roller thingies. So for collagen, I know there's a lot of collagen supplements, collagen products. The important thing is that collagen has to go into your skin and it has to stimulate your skin to build collagen. So just putting that collagen on your skin isn't going to do much like as a topical treatment. You really want to get that collagen in your skin to force itself to kind of reproduce. But I'll use it a sec. I really like to roll over. So sheet masks, uh, they're like a kind of a controversial thing for me. So I personally don't like to use sheet masks. Um, they don't actually add any value in my opinion to your skin. They're just kind of a nice thing to have. I used to bring them with me like on really long flights, like an 18 hour flight or something, and they feel really, really cool, really, really relaxing, but it doesn't actually do much for your skin. Also, the one-time use of sheet masks um, is really bad for the environment because of all of the packaging materials for that sheet mask. A lot of times they're packaged, you know, in a wrapper with another plastic wrap on top of it. Um, and also the ingredients in sheet masks. There's a lot of fragrance and a lot of sheet masks which can further irritate my skin. And they also contain a lot of silicones. And those silicones are not are not only like not good for your skin, at least for me, they start to clog my pores um, and they create these tiny little bumps underneath my skin. But they can also seep, if you just throw away the sheet mask, they can also seep into the um, dirt and soil and wherever you toss it out. So. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of sheet masks. I think once in a while they're great, but as for a skincare staple, eh. Really gnarly rashes, just from like, like brushing with someone using the same brush on me and another I really like the line up and they're just you know, rushing all this out onto you, so. Skin. What, I'm really like, like touch my face during brush, you know. Yeah, it's really important that you're not um, sharing, you know, makeup or skincare tools. I mean, especially now during COVID, I don't think people should be sharing really much of anything, but it's also very important that you regularly wash your brushes, you regularly replace your cosmetics and skincare, and always like before you do your makeup, before you do your skincare, remember to wash your hands. Sometimes I'll take it and like clump it into a ball and grab the extra. Let it sit for a sec. Now, I don't believe you should be rubbing your skin. Now, Kendall seems to be like gently rubbing, but you don't wanna take, I mean, any kind of material and like scrub it on your skin because that's gonna further irritate your skin. Again, and it can actually spread the bacteria like if you're acne prone like I am. 
um, it can just spread more if you're just rubbing stuff all over. I love this cleanser. It is by Christy Kid. It's called Clean. I'm gonna drink I some have always been super stuff. into my skin, especially when I was about like 14 and started breaking out. I started like really, you know, getting into skincare. And I remember I would go to like the pharmacy with my mom and get all these probably not great products. Didn't um, Kendall Jenner, like, wasn't she the spokesperson for Proactive? I'm sure she's had acne, but she hasn't had acne like I've had acne, like the cystic acne that's like inside the skin that bleeds all the time and like you can't wear makeup over it because it's just like, it's like mounds of acne. So I just love it when celebrities said like, say like, oh yeah, I've had acne because there's having acne and then there's having acne. And I've just been really into it for so long just because I have had acne prone skin. So for me, it's just like something that was an obvious thing I felt I needed to get into and seeing my own skin journey has taught me so much. So yeah, I've, I've kind of come up with this regimen and this routine that really works for me. It's been really, really okay. I do notice she has some breakouts. It's pretty minor, but breakouts along the jawline. And for me, breakouts along the jawline, jawline are usually hormonal. So they usually happen before that time of month. So if you can use a product like an exfoliating product or a product with glycolic acid. For example, uh, the pumpkin enzyme S from Vanish or something, what I do is I just take that, I put it along my jawline and chin right before that time of month and I slough it off. It helps kind of prevent that. So usually jawline acne is hormonal. <laughs> so, I mean, I obviously am human. I have my breakouts here and there, um, but yeah, it's been so I much I really better. like her nails. I don't know if it's me, but they're nice. They're not like, to, I think they're like a French, I, I don't know. They're, they're cute, her nails before. are cute. It was, it was brutal for a moment. I wear sunscreen every day and use this Ulta MD Clear. So Ulta MD Clear, um, Ulta MD is the sunscreen that I recommend. So Banish, we're currently testing out different sunscreen formulations um, and different types of sunscreens. And we're doing our research for that, but I haven't come up with one that I'm like super happy about. But um, I do use the Ulta MD Clear and I've used the Ulta MD Regular one. The great thing I love about it is that it has niacinamide and niacinamide um, helps with lightening, um, like lightening the skin or kind of reducing those post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation marks, um, helps with dark spots. And this sunscreen doesn't give that like bally cast that a lot of other sunscreens I have found do. So that's a good sunscreen I recommend. I just use a little bit and then I sometimes mix it. Honestly, most days I mix it with this SkinCeuticals serum, four to five drops. So SkinCeuticals serum, this is very, very similar to the Banish oil. Um, they both have l acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, but if you can see here, our uh, Banish oil is clear, whereas in the video, uh, the SkinCeuticals one is orange. It's like a really dark brown orange, actually, and that's because most vitamin C companies will color their vitamin C uh, so that way you don't know how long it's been out there for. But Banish's products are made fresh. Um, we make them, we ship them to order. So this bad boy, if you leave this out, I guarantee you um, in a few months it will turn that color. So I think that's kind of cool to see the shelf life of the products and how the products evolve. But um, these are both really great vitamin C serums. They both have l acid, ferulic acid. Ferulic acid is a stabilizer with the vitamin C. So with ferulic acid, it will help make the vitamin C stable and more potent on the skin. Ferulic acid is a great um, antioxidant that is found in plant cell walls and it will help like fight off the free radicals from the environment. So it's like kind of like fighting all the environmental pollutants and stuff. Um, so vitamin C and ferulic acid are like two really good peas in a pod kind of thing. Vitamin E is also very nourishing and hydrating for the skin. The SkinCeutical Serum has a very, very distinct smell. I don't know if you have smelt it, but it has a very, very distinct smell. Over time, the Banish Oil, if you leave it out and it oxidizes and turns orange and stuff, um, it will have a similar smell, not quite as strong, but it does have a very distinct smell. Uh, I just wanted to say that. Oh, and the SkinCeutical Serum is $160 last time I checked. So it's not a cheap 
item. This um, Mario Badescu green tea cucumber aloe spray. I love these um, exfoliating makeup wipes for my lips just before I put on makeup. So the Mario Badescu, I have a few of their sprays and the issue with their products is they have a lot of fragrance in them, so they smell amazing, but there's also a ton of fragrance in them, and there's also um, artificial color. So if you look in the back of the labels, they'll say like green number, 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 or purple number, number, number. Um, it's just not necessary in your skincare. It's just one of those like icing, it's, it's like a very uh, superficial part for the skincare. So for me personally, I don't like to have any fragrance or any artificial colors on my skincare because it's just not needed. Um, and I also don't like having propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is also an ingredient that's found in a lot of e-cigarettes, um, antifreeze components. It kind of prevents the liquid from freezing. So I use the, um, uh, the Banished Vitamin C Beauty Elixir, and this is really great. It doesn't have any alcohol in here, it doesn't have any propylene glycol, it doesn't have any fragrance, um, whatnot. I mean, you can pretty much pronounce all the ingredients in the back, but what's so cool about this is because it doesn't have that antifreeze component, um, if you leave this out in the blizzard, it will freeze, and this glass jar might actually leak a little bit because when something freezes, it expands, right? But a lot of skincare formulations, they will add components to the skincare to prevent it from freezing because if the skincare is not fresh, if they're transporting it to like Canada or, you know, to Iceland or wherever they decide to sell these products, they need to go through, you know, airplanes and warehouses and all that stuff. So they need to formulate the product to withstand a lot of different climate changes when they transport it. But because Banish, we are made to order and we ship the same day you order, we don't need, it doesn't need to do that much traveling, right? So we don't need to add those preservatives or those unnecessary ingredients. So for me, it's like every single ingredient in the product needs to serve a purpose. It can't just be there for the sake of being there for like having fun, you know, like skincare is not like accessorizing. Cause for me, my skin is super sensitive. Um, it's gonna break out towards everything. So the fewer ingredients you have in your skincare, the less probability you're gonna break out towards them. So anyways, that's <laughs> my spiel. Makeup, so I like scrub my lips to get all the dead skin off. I was trying to figure out for so long why. So for makeup wipes, it's kind of a hit or miss for me. Um, honestly, they're not that great for the environment because you have to throw them out all the time. But I understand it's like using toilet paper or sorry, it's using like paper towels or whatnot. Like it's kind of hard to be 100% perfect, right? Um, but sometimes makeup wipes for the skin to get rid of makeup can be too harsh. Um, you can start rubbing stuff around and you can start tugging areas in your skin. And when you're tugging areas in your skin, you're really kind of aggravating it more than necessary. I was trying to figure out for so long why my skin was breaking out. Was it hormones? Was it what I'm eating? Am I allergic to something? Am I using the wrong products? And once I felt like I got my regimen down, I knew that it wasn't what I was putting on my face. I started thinking about my diet a lot and um, decided to cut out dairy. Not entirely, I, I love cheese. So it's hard for me to cut out cheese. And that honestly helped me so. So this is interesting. She's, uh, Kendall says, was it my products? Was it my diet? Was it my hormones? And actually acne is caused by all three and obviously genetics too. So um, diet is a huge contributor and Kendall said she cut out dairy. And dairy, I would say out of anything you can cut out is probably the number one thing you can cut out if you want to reduce your acne. Uh, you can just go through and like figure out how uh, the cows are fed nowadays. Um, they inject these animals with so much hormones. The hormones kind of leak into the milk. Um, just also like the stuff that these cows eat and uh, you know what they put into them will leak into their milk and go into you. And those hormones can also affect your hormones, which can get it all out of whack. So dairy is definitely something uh, you should be eliminating and omitting if you do have acne and seeing if that reacts. My daughter, six months old, six month old daughter, um, we fed her on a formula and she actually had really bad baby acne. So we switched her to uh, Nutrimogen, which is a hypoallergenic formula. It's like four times the cost, whatever, but 
her uh, acne, her baby acne completely went away. So she's actually a lactose-free, dairy-free baby. Um, so yeah, a lot of people, including little babies, can be allergic to dairy and it will show up as acne on their skin. Another thing to omit if you do have acne is, is uh, meat, you know, meat and dairy. Uh, again, the whole meat thing, all these hormones in the meat go into you, it affects your hormones and your skin breaks out because it's like, what's going on? So I would highly recommend uh, cutting out meat and dairy, going vegan, going on a plant-based diet if you wanna see if that helps your skin. For me personally, I noticed sugar was a huge causing factor for my skin. And that's ironic because I just had a little bit of milk tea. Sugar moderation is okay, but I noticed that so much processed food has so much sugar. For example, just eating a cup of, you know, Captain Crunch or Cocoa Puff cereal in the morning or eating a granola bar thinking that it was super healthy, but just eating multiples of that. Eating yogurt, drinking orange juice, um, getting a Starbucks uh, white chocolate mocha, like all these things have so much sugar. And sugar can affect your insulin levels, your blood sugar levels, which can also affect your hormone levels, can affect the amount of sebum you produce on your skin, which can also affect if you get the cystic acne or not. So um, it's a holistic kind of thing, um, diet, but going plant-based, um, cutting out the sugar, and doing that for a few months um, will really, really help your skin. And then Kendall also mentions, is it what I'm using on my skin? Definitely. Um, obviously, diet is crucial diet and genetics are probably some of the biggest things that are causing acne because we cannot change our genes if you're just prone to having acne and acne scars. You can't really change that. But if you're using skincare products that are further aggravating your skin, then um, it's going to make it worse. So if you're using products that you're allergic to, for example, silicones or fragrance, uh, mineral oil, certain kind of colors or certain kind of oils on your skin that can further exacerbate your acne and can clog your pores and just make it worse. Um, if you use a lot of products with like alcohol on your skin, for example, it can actually be even drying. So people think like, oh, to get rid of acne, I need to dry out my skin. Well, the more you dry it out, the more your oil glands interpret that as, oh my gosh, I need to produce more oil. And then the more likely you're gonna get really clogged pores and that cystic acne. It's kind of like when you, um, the more you wash your hair, have you noticed the more oily it gets? And like, if you don't wash your hair for a long time, it gets less oily. Um, it's kind of like the same thing. So we do not need to strip our skin with anything. We don't need to put too many ingredients on our skin. I always say less is more. Being more gentle is always better. We don't need to be abrasive. We don't need to use those uh, skin brushes. So those skin brushes um, are the ones that like, for me, they're too irritating. If you do have little like baby pimples that are about to erupt, you using those skin brushes are just going to spread that all over your skin. Um, using anything super harsh with like um, walnut shells or apricot scrubs that can also um, tear your skin too or those Biore pore strips they can also tear your skin and leave permanent scarring I have permanent scars on the side of my nose from that <laughs> um, so you just want to be really careful and realize that it's not about putting more products on your skin it's putting less products better products better ingredients less is definitely more and uh, being gentle and kind, not stripping your skin away with all this abrasive stuff. Oh, it's hard for me to cut out cheese, and that honestly helped me so much. And I drank tons of water. Oh, and she says it's hard to cut out cheese. So cheese is actually okay, sometimes for the dairy. Um, the issue with dairy comes from skim milk that can affect your acne because skim milk has a high glycemic index, which means it um, will increase your blood sugar. Um, so try cutting out skim milk first if you don't want to cut out all of dairy or just cut out milk. Um, and then gradually cut out more and more and more of dairy. And water is super great for the skin. I love drinking a ton of water. You should be definitely drinking a lot of water. Um, but also the air is really important in your skin and also the moisture levels in your house, in your room. So if it is dry where you are, especially if you're running the heater, turn on a humidifier, get a humidifier, get distilled water. Um, I also really like, and I always recommend this, this Evian facial spray. Um, it's just really great, just pure water in a mist. You can spray it on, it keeps your skin hydrated. So just make sure to keep your skin hydrated because if your skin is dry, um, it's going to 
wreak more havoc overall. So after I scrub with my exfoliating makeup wipe, I love this kind of If your skin is dry, it's going to um, weaken the skin barrier, uh, which can create like really dry, gross, non-glowy skin. I use skin lip mask. I put it on while I'm doing my makeup and then once I'm done and ready to move on to like doing my lipstick, I wipe it off. My last step before I do my makeup is this La Mer cream. Okay, so I have actually purchased the La Mer cream, the $200, $300 La Mer cream. And honestly, it was kind of disappointing. So I actually did some research into the ingredients in the uh, La Mer cream. One of the first ingredients is mineral oil. So mineral oil is a very, very cheap ingredient. Um, it can also very much irritate your skin. So products with mineral oil will always cause me to get like a little like whitehead underneath my skin. The Shiseido eye cream also has mineral oil. Every single time, I purchased it like three times thinking it's gonna like work out every single time and it always creates like a little bump underneath my skin. Um, also the La Mer cream has propylene glycol which is that ingredient in antifreeze, e-cigarettes, um, whatever. There's better alternatives other than propylene glycol. And it also contains um, denatured alcohol in the La Mer cream. So denatured alcohol is basically alcohol and while a little bit is not gonna be bad for your skin, over time using products with alcohol can actually dry out your skin and weaken the skin barrier. Um, and also the La Mer cream has petrolatum or petroleum basically, the stuff in Vaseline, whatnot. Um, and while there isn't really a cause for concern, it could contain carcinogenic properties um, in the EU and other countries. They have different grades of the kind of petrolatum they can use in the products. Um, so you always want to make sure you're using the highest grade uh, petrolatum so that way it won't have any risk of having any of those like cancer causing properties. But yeah, petrolatum is that stuff in petroleum, gasoline stuff that they used um, and they make into petroleum. Oh, and it also has fragrance, the La Mer, the La Mer um, cream. It does smell good. I will say that it does smell good. Overall, she is so beautiful and I'm so happy for her success and all of her family's success. So this was so much fun for me to do a reaction video. Oh my gosh, it like brings me back to why I loved skincare and makeup, which was just feeling confident in your own skin. And I love the experimentation of it and trying out all different products. And I'm really excited to do more reaction videos. So let me know in the comments below what reaction videos um, you like me to do. And also comment and ask, and, Comment if you are wearing lipstick and lip glosses nowadays because I don't because I'm always wearing a mask. Let me know if you are, even if you're wearing a mask or not. I'll see you guys later. Bye.